Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Bell? Yes? I'm Jim Buck. I'm driving the stage from here on into Dodge. Oh. What happened to the other driver? I always spell him here. He told me to look out for you. Oh, that's kind of him. And kind of you, too. You're awful young to be traveling alone. I'm 17. Well, now I take it back. Are we about ready to leave? As soon as I get the other passenger away from that bar over there. They told me I'd be alone on the rest of the trip. Well, miss, I don't know this fella. Says his name's Bassett. But if he's drunk, I promise you he ain't riding. How do you expect anybody to ride sober <laughs> hey, if you're driving, Jim? Marshal Dillon, what are you doing in Pawnee? Oh, I had some business up this way, but I'd sure like to get back to Dodge. Uh, you got any room? Sure have. Oh, uh, this here's Marshal Dillon, Miss Bell. How do you do, Marshal? Miss Bell? It's Linda. <laughs> All right, Linda. Uh, when are you leaving, Jim? Soon's I round up that Bassett fella. Well, get him, whoever he is, huh? and drive easy, will you, Jim? I wore out a horse getting this far, and I sure need some sleep. I'm glad you're riding with us, Marshal. I don't like the looks of that fella Bassett, but you two climb in now. We'll pull out of here in five minutes. <laughs> sleep. Oh, I am, huh? And I'm pretty tired. Well, that's too bad. Now, it's going to be a long ride, so why don't you just sit there and look out the window, huh? Because <laughs> I'd rather look at this pretty little girl here. Now, come on, honey, have a drink. No, I... Hey, Jim! Huh? Jim, pull up, will you? What for? You heard me, pull up! Okay, Marshal. Pull up. Pull up. What do you think you're doing? 
There's no trouble. Your friend Bassett here wants to ride up on the box with you. What? He wants somebody to talk to, Jim. Are you crazy? He's waiting for you, Bassett. I'm staying where I am. You're holding us up. Now you get moving. All right. I will. You're like you broke my arm. You should have left your gun where it was. All right, now get outside. Hurry it up. I'm going. But you're going to wish you'd never seen me. I'm wishing that already. Give me a hand, driver. I'm sorry for the delay, Linda. No, it was worth it, though. Maybe now we can both get a little sleep, huh? Well, I can certainly yeah. use... What'd you say? I said I can certainly use some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I feel as though I hadn't slept since I left St. Louis. Oh, you come a long way, huh? Oh, it'll be worth it once I reach Dodge. How's that so? I'm meeting my fiancé there, Marshal. Oh, well, maybe I know him. Oh, he hasn't been there long. His name's Lou Paxson. Lou Paxson, huh? Yeah, well, what does he do? Well, I don't really know. I met him in St. Louis. It was only for a few days. Uh Uh-huh. I see. Marshal. What? What? If you promise to keep it a secret, I'll tell you something. Okay, I promise. I ran away from home. My parents think I'm too young to get married. Oh? Well, how old are you, Linda? Seventeen. Do you think that's too young? Well, I don't know, Linda. I guess that depends on what you're like and what this fellow Paxson's like. Oh, he... oh, he's a wonderful man. He's so strong and so handsome. Uh-huh. You'll see when you meet him. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. Marshal? Yeah. Are there a lot of men in Dodge like that man, Bassett? Oh, why do you ask, Linda? Well, he frightens me. He's not going to forget what you did to him just now. Oh, well, you let me worry about Bassett, huh? I don't like him. Well, I don't like him either, but uh, why don't we forget about him and try to get a little sleep, huh? This is it, L&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor, L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior filtration, superior taste, superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White, all white, pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light, and mild. No doubt about it, l and is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, l and filters. l and has got everything. It's the best. You want me to give you a hand? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
There we go. Welcome home, Mr. Dillon. Ah, oh, hello, Chester. Oh, Linda, this is Chester Proudfoot. How do you do, Chester? How do you do, Miss... Uh, it's Linda Bell, Chester, but she likes it simple. Oh, you look good. There he is, Marshal, there he is. Huh? No, no. Linda! Hey, how come she knows him? Why, do you? Yes, sir, Hello, Lou. Oh, Linda. Oh, Lou, I made it, and I never thought I would. Oh, I knew you would. No, oh, it might have been bad, too, except for Marshal Dillon here. Oh, you're Marshal Dillon. Yeah, that's right. Lou, it was that man right over there. He was what? trying to make me drink with him and everything. You, you... Which man? He's coming this way. Him. Marshal? Where? His name's Bassett, Lou. He was annoying me. Don't you worry about him, Lynn. Ah, so this is who the little girl was coming to see. She's my fiancée. I'll be darned. I mean, she didn't say she was coming here to get married. Well, it's true. Sure. What do you want, Bassett? Uh, you got my gun in your belt. You aim to steal it? Hey, you aim to sell it? What do you mean by that? You look like a gunman to me. Where are you from? Wichita. Now, what are you going to do about that? Here, catch it. <laughs> You didn't have to throw it at me. And I wanted to see how you handled it. You move pretty fast when you're sober. What are you prodding me for, Marshal? You aim to stay here long? No. Not long. Good. And while you are here, I'm going to be watching you. That won't bother me. Well, well, Marshal, uh... I got to thank you for taking care of Linda. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Now, I don't know who that Bassett fella is, but he shouldn't have been bothering her. No, that's right. Well, come on, Linda, we'll get your stuff. They got a room for you over to the Dodge house. All right, Lou. Marshal, I, I hope I'll see you again. You too, Chester. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Linda. We, we'll see you. So long, Linda. Bye. Come on, Linda. My, that Paxson acts kind of funny, don't he? He's trying to hide something, Chester. He is? Yeah, he and Bassett didn't handle that very well. What do you mean? They know each other. You think so? Yeah, it was pretty clear. But they don't want anybody to know it. Well, why? What do you know about Lou Paxson, Chester? Nothing. I just seen him around. Uh-huh. Any idea what his game is? No, sir. I don't, none at all. Well, maybe we'll find out now. I expect he's just been waiting for Bassett to get here. Something it seems a lot longer than that to me. <laughs> I also heard what happened on the stage. Oh, uh -huh. you did? Yeah. Linda told me. Linda? Now, how come you know her? She's sitting right over there. What? Well, it kind of surprised me, too. But Paxson brought her in this afternoon and made Sam give her a job. Sam didn't like the idea much. She's only 17, Matt. Yeah, I know, Kitty. What's this Paxson up to, anyway? Well, I don't know, and I don't care. But you got to get that girl out of here. This is a terrible place for her. That's not my affair, Kitty. Since you're the only one that can do it, it is your affair. Oh, now, Kitty, I, I can't interfere in a thing like this. Why? Because nobody's stolen anything or killed anybody? Because there's no law against it? Is that why? Uh, no, that isn't why, but... Uh... But nothing. You know what can happen to that little girl. Look at her, Matt. She's scared half to death right now. 
You wait till midnight. Wait till it starts to get really rough in here. You know what some of these horn-handed, drunken wild men are likely to do? You can't let it happen, Matt. You gotta get her out of here, and if you're any kind of a man at all, you'll do it right now. Well? Well, Kitty, I... All right, ask her to come over here, huh? Sometimes I get a feeling that maybe you're not all bad, Matt Dillon. Yeah, I'll bring it back. Here we are. Ah, oh, hello, Linda. Kitty said you wanted to see me, Marshal. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sit down, won't you? All right. You don't have to be scared of the marshal, Linda. Oh, I'm not really. But, well, tonight I feel scared of everybody. Uh, then why do you stay here, Linda? Lou says I've got to. Why? He says it's to keep me out of the way. Oh? Out of the way of what? I don't know. But if I'm here, he knows where I am and he can always come to find me. But I don't like it here, Marshal. I'm not used to men like these. Linda, I want you to go back to your room, and I want you to stay there. Oh, I can't, Marshal. Lou'd get angry. You don't have to tell him about it. But he'll find out. He'll find out, all right, Linda. As soon as I explain things to Sam here, he'll find out from me. At the end of the hall. There goes that fellow Bassett. Yeah. I didn't know he had a room here. Well, that could be Paxson's room he came out of. Number 12, ain't it? By golly, you're right, it is. Now, listen here, I... Oh. Thought it was someone else. Bassett's gone, Paxson. What do you want, Marshal? I want to talk to you. Oh. What about? Why did you pretend you didn't know Bassett at the stage this morning? I don't know him. Well, he just walked out of your room. I mean, I didn't know him. I didn't know him this morning. You're lying. Now, Bassett's a gunman, Paxson. What's your business with him? I got no business with him, Marshal. We were talking, is all. Uh huh. About how much are you going to pay him? I got nothing to do with him, I tell you. All right. Now, I don't know who you're after, but this time I'm going to stop the trouble before it starts. Chester, hmm? when's the next stage leave? Uh, not till the day after tomorrow, Mr. Dillon. But there's a Santa Fe out in the morning. I'll be there to see that you're on it, no, Jackson. No, I can't leave, Mar. Marshal, you've got no right to make me. You're leave. leaving, and you're leaving alone. What? A man who'll put an innocent 17-year-old girl to work in the long branch isn't going to keep her if I can stop it. I got her out of there, Paxson, and I told Sam she's not to come back. Well, I, I got... I got good reason for her being there. Oh, and what are they? Well, it's none of your business. You... Marshal, you're interfering in something. You've got no right. As far as Linda's concerned, maybe I am, but I'm doing it anyway. That you and Bassett are different. And I'm going to run him out of town tomorrow, too. You're making a mistake, Dylan. If I am, you can stop it. What's that mean? Start talking. No. Okay. Come on, Chester. Thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day. To the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste.
Because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light, and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. Oh, come in, Doc. Come on in. Said, you know, it's nearly midnight. Well, now, when did I start going to bed at midnight? Well, you should. A man needs to sleep. <laughs> then what are you doing up? <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to argue with. Well, I'm your man. Start up. Yeah. Oh. What? Sounds like somebody beat us to it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Uh, that came from right down the street. Down by the Alpha Gans. Yeah, it sounded like it. Over here, Chester. What happened, Chester? Lou Paxson. They shot him. He went into the back room at the Alifaganza wearing a mask and carrying a gun in his hand, but they shot him before he could run off with any money. He didn't even try to shoot back. Was he hurt bad, Chester? I I don't know, Doc. I didn't wait to see. Well, I'll go see that he's taken up to my office. Give him a hand, Chester. I'll come up there in a few minutes. Where are you going? There's a man across the street I want to have a little talk with. Where? Oh. Bassett. Yeah, that's right. Evening, Marshal. What are you doing here, Bassett? Watching. Watching for what? Not for anything. Just watching. You working with Lou Paxson? Why? He just got shot. Dead? Why don't you go find out? Hmm. Ain't nothing to me, Marshal. You know, Bassett, I was going to run you out of town tomorrow, but now I think I'll keep you around till I find out what this is all about. I ain't done a thing. And you're not going to because I'm going to lock you up right now. I've never been in jail in my life, Marshal. A lot of men haven't, even men like you. But you're going now. No. No, I ain't. You leave your gun alone. Then get out of here and leave me alone. There's been one shooting already. That's enough. Now I'll take your gun, Bassett. Not likely. He missed you. He was in too much of a hurry, Chester. Is he dead? He died standing. I knew there'd be trouble. I just had to wait and see what happened. Go get Linda and bring her up to docks, will you? Yes, sir. How is he, Doc? He's not good, man. One bullet in the neck, another in the chest. I'm sorry, Paxson. There isn't much I can do for you. No. No, I can't live this way. Not for long. Paxson, Chester's gone for Linda. She'll be here directly. Yeah, poor little girl. How did you expect to hold up the Oliver like that? Was Bassett supposed to help you? Him? 
No. He was just waiting for the money. What? I'll tell you, it don't matter. It's what he come here for. We robbed a stage up north. And I run off and I spent the money in St. Louis. And he followed me here. He found me. And no wonder you didn't want to tell me what it was all about. He said he was going to hurt Linda if I didn't get the money. So I figured she was safer where there was a crowd around. Bassett's dead, Paxson. Is he? So am I. Just a moment. gone, Matt. Oh, that's probably Linda. You better keep her out of here. Yeah. Uh, Chester, wait in there, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, what are you going to tell her, Matt? I'm going to tell her the truth, Doc. The whole story. Oh, that would be awful hard on her, wouldn't it? Finding out what kind of a man Paxson was. No, you could spare her that. Linda got off easy, Doc. Married to an outlaw, she'd have been in real trouble. But all this won't do her any good at all if I don't send her home a lot smarter than she left. And that's what I'm going to do. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Eleanor Tannen, Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, and Paul Dubois. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff. Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters.